Well, let's go ahead and take a look at our second problem. Now, this one goes back to looking at, at volumes and trying to maximize volumes. This, again, is a, is a problem out of the textbook, page 228, problem 32. And the problem states that a right triangle, whose hypotenuse is the square root of three units long, is revolved about one of its legs to generate a right circular cone. Find the radius, height, and volume of the cone of greatest volume that can be made this way. So let's go ahead and start by drawing a picture. Okay. We have a right triangle. So we have some right triangle like this. I'm going to draw it in a sort of perspective view because we're going to be rotating this triangle to come up with a right circular cone. The radius of this, or rather the hypotenuse, of, of this triangle is the square root of 3. That's going to come into play later as we deal with constraints. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this triangle and we're going to revolve it around one of its legs. So just for the sake of, of argument, I'm going to choose this leg and we're going to rotate we're going to rotate that that around that that particular leg. And what you'll see is poorly drawn though it is, we end up with a with a right circular cone. We end up with some sort of a cone. And what we're asked to do is determine what the volume is, the maximum volume here, um, that we can produce with a cone that has a hypotenuse of square root of 3. So if we want to compute the volume, then the first thing we need to remember is the, the volume formula for a right circular cone. The volume of a right circular cone is going to be one-third the base area times the height. So let's go ahead and start defining some values for, for B and for H. Um, I'm going to go ahead and call the the B here is the base area. So what we really want to do here is maybe rewrite this as one third the area of the base here, since this is a cone, uh, circular cone, will simply be pi r squared and h. So I'm going to call h this particular leg of my right triangle and we'll go ahead and call this particular leg r since those are the, the values that show up in our formula. So the volume is one-third pi r squared h. You can see here that we have a connection um, between these, these variables here, r squared and h. Those are two variables that are adjustable. Right? We want to choose the values of r and h that make a cone that has a volume as large as possible. But we can't just choose any values of r and h. We can't choose r to be 100 and h to be 100 because we have a constraint here. And the constraint is that the hypotenuse has to be the square root of 3. So the question we can ask ourselves is, how do we make a connection between r, h, and the hypotenuse? r and h are legs of this right triangle, and, and, and the square root of 3 is the hypotenuse. So we can go through and, and write the Pythagorean theorem here. And the Pythagorean theorem, in this particular case, will say that r squared plus h squared has to equal the square root of 3 squared. Okay, that's simply the Pythagorean theorem written for the right triangle that we, we've been given in this problem. This will allow us to choose values of r and h from any values that we would like, but they will be values that satisfy this constraint and guarantee that we have the right kind of triangle that we're working with. So we want to go ahead and, and do a little bit of substitution. Now we need to, we need to make some changes here. Let's, let's go ahead and simplify this Pythagorean theorem expression here first. This looks like r squared plus h squared is equal to 3. And what we want to do is we need to combine this with our formula for the volume. And the volume looks like 1 third pi r squared h. So we need to do a substitution here. And if you notice, in the volume formula we have r squared and we have r squared here. So we can do a substitution very easily um, by substituting r squared in the volume equation for the for the relationship we have over here we can say that r squared has to equal 3 minus h squared and that's much easier than trying to substitute in for h we would have a square root in our expression and that would make our problem quite a bit more difficult so if we combine these two relationships together we find that the relationship for volume is volume has to be one third pi times 3 minus h squared times h. 
This is the volume of our right circular cone. Um, expressed only in terms of one variable. So now we can go through and we can take the derivative and we can determine what the maximum value um, for, the, for the volume will be. We have to find R, H, and the volume to um, complete this problem. So I'm going to go ahead and take the, the derivative here. So we'll find the derivative with respect to H of the volume. I'm going to have to use both the product and chain rule here to solve this problem. Um, we have one-third pi as our constants here. Then with the product rule, I'm going to take the derivative of the first. So I'm going to take the derivative of 3 minus h squared. That's going to give me a minus 2h times the second, which is h, plus the first, which is 3 minus h squared, times the derivative of h, which is simply 1. So we end up with this relationship here. This is the relationship that defines the volume rate of change as we change the height of the cone. This, this shows how those are related. And in order to find our maximum value, in order to find our maximum value, we're going to have, go ahead and set that equal to zero. So we have zero equals one-third pi times, if we simplify things a little bit in here, I have minus 2h squared plus 3 minus h squared. And you can see again, they've picked some values that will help to make things right. The one-third pi is irrelevant here. It doesn't affect where this function will be zero. We can divide that out. And when we do that, we find that minus 3h squared plus 3 has to equal zero. That's simply simplifying this particular piece here um, and bringing that down. And the only way this will work clearly is if h is equal to 1. So now we've found that the height has to equal 1 we would like to go through and figure out all the rest of the expressions now as well. So we, we know that r squared plus h squared is equal to the square root of 3 squared, or that r squared must equal h squared will be 1, so we have 3 minus 1, r must equal the square root of 2. And remember that volume is 1 third pi r squared h. So in this particular case, the volume will be 1 third pi. The square root of 2 squared will simply be 2, and h is 1. So our volume, the maximum volume that we can construct, will be a volume of 2 thirds pi. Okay. So again, I know that was a fast problem. We went through that rather quickly. But watch it again if you have some questions. Um, see if you can find places where you struggled. What we focused on, again, was this problem-solving step of determining what the constraints were, writing a function to be maximized and minimized, combining those to get an equation in only one unknown, taking the derivative, setting that equal to zero, and then making sure that we answered the problem. In this case, we had to find the height, the radius, and the volume. Always make sure that you go back and determine that you've answered the questions that you were asked to, to find. Okay. If you have more questions, please come and see me. Bring some questions to class. I hope to see you then. Take care.